and welcome to today's Live Isles class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a great week and is looking forward to an even better weekend. All right, everyone. In this class, we are looking at task one diagram, writing like a pro. So what are the steps you need to take to write a band nine task one response for the academic IELTS? That's what we are going to be discussing uh, in the next hour. Uh, as usual, everyone, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. Uh, for the general IELTS, please visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of help for you. Uh, if you're studying for general IELTS, there are general IELTS task one videos and examples at gieltshelp.com. Welcome, Abhishek. Hi, Janiel. Hi, Bharat. Hi, Nick Hill. Good to see you all. Okay, everyone, our websites look like this. This is our academic uh, website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join uh, our premium package there. And for the general IELTS, it's the green background, and you can click that big uh, red button to join there. We are um, British Council IELTS Registration Center uh, for Saudi Arabia online, and um, we are trained uh, and certified British Council agents. So if you have questions, let us know. Hi, Rashika. Hi, Mahmoud. Hi, Oas. Welcome to the class. All right, everyone. Um, it, of course, we have apps. Uh, when you're looking for apps, search your Play Store for Academic IELTS Help. Link the app to ahelp.com. For General IELTS Help, link the app uh, to gieltshelp.com. So General IELTS Help app. And if you have questions, send me an email to adrian at uh, aehelp.com. Okay, uh, so members, uh, how's the screen? Is it too dark? It's not dark enough? Let me know. Um, we'll play around with it a little bit, especially when we get to our diagram today. Uh, so right now, task one, writing. It is a diagram, and then we'll do listening, um, and that will be listening parts uh, three and four because we did one and two yesterday. So it'll be listening parts three and four after this class. And members, uh, tomorrow you have a Q&A session, a question and answer session where you can ask me about um, the IELTS, about English. So whatever you might have, okay? Uh, thanks, Bakrat, Ois, uh, Nick Hill. Yeah, so it's good right now. The brightness, fantastic. Um, okay, so uh, let's do this. Let's get into today's task one. Okay, all right, uh, here we go. Uh, writing task one, you should spend about 20 minutes on this task. Uh, it's one third of the time of the writing and it's one third the mark uh, for the writing, which makes sense. Uh, somebody asked me yesterday in an email if it's a good idea to start with task two uh, and I said no. You should always start with task one because task one is kind of like a warm up for your writing. Uh, it's better to make mistakes in task one if you have to make a mistake uh, than in task two. So uh, definitely always start with task one. Task one is an expository essay. That means you don't have to think about too much information on your own. You just use the information that's given, unless you're doing uh, general IELTS, but then it's a little bit easier than task two, uh, even in that case. So. Uh, so it's a kind of a warm up, and as long as you know what you're doing for task one, especially in the academic, uh, you should be okay. All right. Uh, don't spend more than 20 minutes. Make sure you have 40 minutes left for task two. Practice that at home. Check the clock when you're in the exam. Okay, here we go. So the map below shows two proposed sites for a new adventure company in the Caribbean. Uh, summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. You should write at least 150 words. Uh, always pay attention to this at least. I think a lot of students don't clearly pay attention or understand uh, the at least part here. Uh, this at least 150 words for the IELTS means that 
uh, to get a full task completion mark. It's one of the criteria is task completion. Okay, uh, task completion means does it contain enough information, have enough words, okay? And the other part of task completion is uh, do you actually answer the question? So you, do you actually do what the task is asking you, okay? So uh, keep this in mind, okay? So the uh, task completion component of your writing section mark uh, comes from two factors, okay? One, you have to write the minimum word count or more. Okay, so uh, keep in mind that most uh, band nine uh, task one essays are between 180 and 200 words. So they're about 30% more than the minimum, okay? Uh, many of these graphs, diagrams, they contain enough information that you can easily write 180, 190 words even, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Um, and second, so two, uh, is you have to answer the task, meaning compare, so explain, compare and contrast the points in the diagram, okay? So you have to do all of that. All right, uh, let's take a look at today's diagram. I wonder how it will look here. It might be a little bit bright. Let me shrink it down for you a little bit. It's a big, big diagram. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. You can, can you see that okay? How's that? Is that fairly clear? If you don't see all the writing, that's fine. I can zoom in. I just want to make sure you kind of uh, see the diagram here. Okay. Uh, perhaps it's a little bit bright. All right. Um, so here's this Caribbean island. Okay. Uh, we have a legend here. Um, the legend says that uh, the, here, let me zoom in. Uh, the legend says that uh, the little red triangles are animal habitats, okay? Um, the blue lines indicate waterways, so like rivers and streams and such. And the uh, yellow indicates roadways. So, um, and so it's always uh, important to pay attention to the to the legend. Okay, uh, Abhishek's can you, saying, can you make it a little bit darker? Okay, I'll make it a tiny touch darker here. Let's see. Okay, how about that? Let's see if that works out. Okay, all right. Um, so and then of course you have uh, a lot of descriptions of this island as well. Uh, so you have all of the different um, different places, North Point course it's the north part of the island I wonder if we have a compass here uh, no but we do have some bearings 14 degrees uh, 25 west so if that is useful and uh, 7 degrees if on the 55th parallel south okay um, all right so eh, maybe we don't need to get into that much detail and then here we have a scale on the island as well that's kind of interesting to note uh, so if you're given a scale like this, then definitely pay attention to it. Um, it shows a five kilometer scale. All right. So we can see that the island uh, from um, west to east side of the island is roughly one, two and a half. So it's about maybe around 12, 13 kilometers across. Okay, so when I'm looking at this diagram, I'm paying attention to all of this um, uh, data that's given to me uh, with the map, okay? And then, uh, of course, all of these names here as well. So, so I take about eh, maybe 30 seconds to kind of observe this. And then, of course, I have these two big black dots here. Um, one of the dots is site one. So this is site one for the tourist company. 
And then S2 is site two for the tourist company. So the question is saying that they're thinking about building a uh, tourist center uh, and they will build it either here or here. Okay, that's, that's the idea. Now we have an interesting feature here, which looks like a mountain. It's probably why it's got all these rivers flowing off of it. And there's even the peak. Okay, so the top of this uh, mountain. Okay, and then pay attention to these little red dots here, these animal habitats. Okay. All right. Um, good. So we have a base here. We have Cross Hill here and we have what looks like an airstrip or an airfield here. Uh, that's fine. Okay. All right. And we have Georgetown here uh, and we have Two Boats Village here. So this is a city. This is a town. Okay, good. So I've observed all of that and that will become very useful a little bit later on. The first step for me right now is just to paraphrase this question with some more details uh, so that uh, we can start the overview, okay? Uh, the overview is uh, made up of two parts. Part one, it's a paraphrase of the question with extra details. Don't just paraphrase, but give extra details using the information in the diagram or the graph. And then the second part of the overview is the main feature. As oftentimes students separate these two elements, but it's really unnecessary, okay? It, then it's kind of like you have a separated introduction. The overview is the introduction, okay? Overview equals introduction. There's no difference. Uh, these two words are basically synonymous when it comes to an expository essay. Okay. This is an expository essay where you explain your ideas using third person voice. Okay. So which equals um, the uh, paraphrase of the question. Um, and and the main feature, okay? So let's do this. I'm gonna write it up here so we can see it a little bit clearer, okay? So uh, the map below shows two proposed sites for a new adventure company in the Caribbean, okay? Let's paraphrase that um, and, um, and give some more details, okay? All right. Everybody on page so far? Any questions? Everybody good so far? Janiel says make it a little bit brighter. I think it's bright enough right now, Janiel. If anybody's agreeing with Janiel, let me know, okay? So, All right, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, we can keep adding, we can keep developing. Uh, Ferdov says the map gives information about the assumed venues for a novel amusement company in the Caribbean island, on this Caribbean island, Ferdov's, on this Caribbean island. Okay. Abhishek, thank you for reverting. 
on the brightness. That's good. Uh, Rashika says the blueprint illustrates two recommended regions, S1 and S2, for a new adventure association uh, on this Caribbean island. State is a little bit different, I think, Rashika, but it's not bad. Okay. It, it's acceptable. I would stick with island here. Okay. Uh, here's mine. So this blueprint of a Caribbean island details key geographical features uh, such as localities, waterways, and roads. Localities would be like uh, uh, cities or beaches or towns. Localities, waterways, and roads, as well as the two locations which are considered for the development of a tourist adventure business. Okay, um, I'm going to add those animal habitats as well. Um, Yeah, because those are important, right? Especially for an adventure company. People are probably going there to see some of the local wildlife in the Caribbean as well. All right. Uh, Ois says, the map illustrates two, suggested, two suggestions for a tourist company uh, to establish their business on a Caribbean island, um, indicating the landscape, town, animals, water, and roads. Uh, Ois, you have a lot of grammatical and word form errors in there. Be really careful with that. Ois, I highly recommend going back every single day and working on your grammar from the basics to the advanced. Start with the basics, okay? Um, it's your grammar that's really holding you back, Ois, from getting a good score, all right? Bharat says, the given map describes two suggested sites uh, for an adventure experience um, or to start an adventure experience, right? Because you start from the business or the location uh, on this Caribbean island. Okay, uh, not bad, Bakrat. Give it a bit more detail, Bakrat. So you're really just paraphrasing. You're not actually giving more details. And um, you can't really get a band eight or band nine that way, Bakrat. Even if you have perfect English, if you're just paraphrasing and not really giving anything extra, uh, you're going to be stuck at about a band seven. Okay. Abhishek says the diagram illustrates two different projected plans uh, for a new escapade organization with two locations on this Caribbean island. Abhishek, I think you have some redundancy, two different projected plans and two locations. It's confusing because you're talking about the same idea in different ways and it makes it confusing when you double up like that. So uh, you don't need to say that, Abhishek. Just say the diagram illustrates uh, two different projected um, plans or localities uh, for a new escapade organization uh, on this Caribbean island. Okay. Jainil says the given blueprint illustrates the Caribbean island where two proposed sites are to be built for a new adventure company. Yeah, you have to use your passive voice here, Jainil, because we're not saying who's building it. We don't necessarily know who the owner of this company is. So uh, you need some more grammar and some more words in there, Jainil, using the passive voice, okay? All right, so um, again, uh, this is my um, paraphrase with some details, right? So I use that information from the legend, okay? Uh, so this blueprint of a Caribbean island uh, details key geographical features such as localities, animal habitats, waterways, roads, as well as the two locations which are considered for the development of a tourist uh, adventure business. Okay, good. So let's uh, take a, a closer look now at what the main feature is. So, so what, what do we notice? What's kind of the main feature about this, um, island? What's, what's kind of observable right away looking at point one and point two and looking at this island what do we notice what can we say about it there's more than one way to do this okay there's more than kind of one feature that jumps out at us we don't need to use the words here 
yet because it's just the main feature. So with the main feature, um, we definitely just want to look at kind of what is observable right away. Uh, notice that uh, we have site two here and we have site one here. There's a very clear difference uh, in these two locations. Okay. All right. Yeah, Abhishek, very good. So Abhishek says site one uh, is uh, planned for uh, kind of a coastal location, so closer to the ocean. And site two is planned more inland uh, towards the center of the island. That's definitely observable, right? And we can also see that there are different features uh, surrounding each one of these locations. So with site two, you have this kind of peak that's a little bit closer. Um, site one, you have Georgetown. So we can clearly see that different geographical features are uh, close to either site one or site two. So those are the two most observable features for me as well, okay? The location, one's inland, one's coastal, and there are different geographical features, um, whether we are at site one or at site two, okay? So that's what we need to put into our main feature for our reader right now, okay? All right, now I don't want to write S1, S2, all the, or sorry, site one, site two. I don't want to write that often. So I'm just going to make it so I can write S1 and S2. And there's a technical way to do that, okay? Uh, I'll show you how to do that, okay? So in the introduction here, again, uh, I have uh, this blueprint of a Caribbean island details key geographical features such as localities, animal habitats, waterways, and roads, as well as two locations. So two locations here, I can just go S1, S2 in brackets right away following the two locations. And now I can use S1 and S2 to refer to these two sites and not have to waste time writing the words, okay? All right, so let's write this main feature and then we're done with the overview and then we can go on to do the analysis and write the body paragraph, the main kind of paragraph of this, uh, of this essay, okay? So here we go. Uh, just going to check here which one was which because I don't want to make an information mistake. So S1 is more coastal and S2 is inland. Okay. All right. So immediately it is clear that S1 is planned. Uh, to be located near the coast. And if I want to be more specific using details, so uh, this would be of course the east, uh, this would be the west. So west coast is more specific and I'm going to pick up more marks for that, okay? So is located near the west coast. of the island and this is a contrast so however S2 is inland towards or uh, near the center of the island. Both of these sites are surrounded by different key features, okay? All right, so now I have my overview and uh, I'm good to go. All right, I'm gonna take a look at your main features as well. I'm just gonna put this underneath so we can continue from here. It'll work better for the next parts. Here we go. Okay, so underneath our map is now the overview. Okay, let's see what you have. So 
Ferdov says S2 is located at close proximity to animal habitats. Uh, that would be one of the points for the analysis. Uh, Rashika says S1 is near a city while S2 is closer to a town. Yeah, so S1 is near a larger settlement, right? <clears throat> okay. Um, Kaishop says S1 and S2 are both connected with roads. So those are all details, okay? Those are not main features. Those are all details. That's what we're going to be writing about next. But before we do that, we want to have a clear idea of what we're comparing, okay? So we don't want to just jump around. That's going to get really confusing and it will make for a weaker essay. Good essays are always well structured going from the most to least or going from the biggest to the smallest. So they have some kind of a logic where they follow some kind of a clear structure so that it's easy to understand and it makes sense, okay? And that we want to do that in this case for sure, all right? Abhishek says, overall, it is evident that uh, S1 plan is closer to the West Coast while S2 is inland uh, near the center of the island with different geographical availability. Yeah, uh, Abhishek, good. Careful with your commas. You don't need so many commas. You don't need a comma after coast and before while because you have a dependent clause after the independent clause. So... Uh, Ferdov says, overall, it can be seen that the first proposed place, S2, is located near the west coast. However, the second assumed location, S2, is near the center and close proximity. Um, yeah, careful with uh, the information mistake, Ferdov's. S1 is located near the west coast, right? S1. Um, and uh, also, Ferdov's, the S1, S2 indicate that right in the very first sentence, and then you don't have to do it later, Okay. Yeah, so Mahmoud, it's a good idea as well, close to the beach, uh, near the peak. Uh, but again, that's going to be more for the analysis, all right? Uh, Janil says, at first glance, it is noticeable that both S1 and S2 are planned near settlements, and the former is towards the west coast, and the latter is inland. Uh, Janil, it's good. It's not town so much. Uh, Cape Town's actually a city, but that's not a big mistake, okay? All right. Okay, good. So now we want to um, we want to discuss uh, the details of these two planned sites, okay? And uh, we want to have that logic. Okay, so we want to have that logic. All right, um, so first of all, um, let's talk about uh, similarities and differences, okay? So here, um, let's talk about uh, the similarities first because that's easy and it makes sense and we can do that quickly, okay? So what are the similarities here? I think um, somebody mentioned it earlier a little bit. I would just start with the similarities here and get those out of the way. Uh, it was Kaishap Modha that said they're both connected by roads, okay? So here uh, we can definitely see that S2 and S1 uh, are accessible. The correct word here is accessible by roads and by waterways, right? So you have a couple of waterways uh, that access uh, S1 and you have a waterway that accesses S2 as well. So both S1 and S2 are accessible by either roads or waterways. Okay, so that's definitely our similarity, and I would start with that as number one. Okay, why? Because it's simple and it's easy. It's the contrasts that are more numerous. Okay, so then we have to contrast. So after we quickly explain that they're both accessible by water and by road, uh, then we contrast. Um, what are the differences? So what's the first noticeable 
difference. Okay. What would you say is the first clear noticeable difference? So what would you do as number two after mentioning to the reader that both can be accessed by road and by water? Okay. What would be the first key difference? Okay, uh, Kashir, so the location we have, because we mentioned it in the uh, main feature that one is coastal and one is more inland, um, take a look at the big lettering here, okay? So don't overthink it. Take a look at the big lettering here. Okay, so what do you notice? What's a big difference here for S1 versus S2? Okay, uh, Mahmoud, uh, closer to the airport, mm, I don't think that's, that would be my number two. Uh, my number two would be a little bit different. I think there are bigger features. So if you're looking at this, I think it's still a little bit too small. Okay, you want to look at the big features first. Oa says S2 is closer to a village and closer to the peak. Uh, Kashira says closer to an urban area. Yeah, all right, so compare these. So uh, Georgetown here, obviously see all this yellow. It's a larger settlement as where Two Boats Village is uh, a smaller settlement. So S1 is located to what looks like the main city on the island, which is Georgetown, and S2 is located to, uh, near to a smaller settlement, which is uh, Two Boats Village. That would be my number two, okay? So that would be number two for me, is making that comparison between the larger nearby city versus the smaller town. Does that make sense? So if you're, think about it this way, everyone, think about it that you're the person who is investing a million dollars into this adventure company. What are you considering? Okay, well, where are my guests going to stay? Are there hotels nearby, right? So you have all of these questions. Where am I going to buy food and equipment, okay? Obviously, if I have to drive back and forth here, even though it's not a great distance, it's still going to be a lot more um, expensive for time and transportation than if I basically am walking distance uh, from uh, the main city, okay? Does that make sense? So I would compare that first, okay? So that would be uh, perhaps an advantage of S1 that it's closer to a larger settlement. Now don't write advantage or disadvantage because we don't know that for sure. We're just reporting, okay? All right, um, what's the third big difference? Okay, what is the third big difference? So don't forget the legend as well. Um, what's the third big difference? This is where you can get a little bit more subjective. Um, so here for site two, we can see that there are animal habitats close by. Uh, and of course, for an adventure company, um, being near the animals and closer to the peak uh, is an advantage. So one of the great aspects of Site 2 is it's closer to what people are actually using this adventure company for, uh, to see animals and maybe to see this interesting mountain here. As we're here, people actually have to travel, maybe by bus or something, uh, to get to these points, okay? so. The actual adventure part of it is the other big difference. So that would be my point three, okay? Again, uh, in the real IELTS, you want to follow this logic quite quickly, okay? You want to go through these points quite quickly um, and come up with these so you can start writing as soon as possible, okay? All right, and then point four, if I still have some time, uh, I might mention the airport. It's kind of a distance from both uh, locations. So site one and site two. Site two is a little bit further, um, but again, it's not that important, okay? So uh, let's see if we have anything else that's missing here. South point, north point, okay. So nothing too, too major after that. All right, so let's get into this. Let's start with number one. Number one are the roads and waterways. 
Okay, number two is Georgetown versus Two Boats Village. Number three are Animal Habitats um, and the Peak. And number four for me would be the airport and maybe these uh, craters that could be interesting as well. Just give me one second, I'll get you back on camera here. Okay, uh, meanwhile, you can start writing. So uh, begin writing for point one and then continue to point two and to point three. Okay, I'm going to do the same, so, and we'll compare as we go along, okay? All right. Um, Abhishek, good question. So Abhishek says, uh, how can we use uh, the uh, kilometer scale uh, in the diagram? Good question, Abhishek. So, yeah, you can use that in a couple of places, right? So uh, here, this is one kilometer. So we can see that uh, site one, according to scale, is roughly a kilometer from Georgetown. Uh, but site two is more than five kilometers from Georgetown, okay? Um, it's right next to Two Boats Village, but it's more than five kilometers east of Georgetown. So very good question, Abhishek, and it's absolutely a good idea to use that scale because it does give more clarity for your reader. Okay, very, very good question. Okay, all right. Um, so let's start the process of the analysis now that we have clear structure in our mind. Okay. So here comes the analyses for plural. So Georgetown, yeah. That would be one word, I believe. Just didn't fit there. Okay, so uh, basically what I'm doing at this point as well, maybe some of you have realized, is that I'm detailing my main feature uh, in, uh, in the first part of the analysis. So as soon as I've mentioned the roads, okay, uh, so uh, as soon as I talk about the waterways and roads being close to site one and site two, um, I'm basically giving more information about this uh, located uh, near the west coast, which is near Georgetown, and S2 is inland, which is five kilometers east next to um, Two Boats Village, right? So here's kind of my first uh, two points. Both of the proposed locations are accessible by either road or waterway. However, S1 is located just roughly one kilometer uh, from the biggest settlement on the island, Georgetown, as where S2 is over five kilometers to the east, located next to Two Boats Village. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, S2 is, and now I'm going into my next point, uh, which are these little animal habitats. Okay. So... is surrounded by animal habitats 
and is much closer to uh, the peak than S1. Okay. All right, let's see what you have so far. Ois says uh, both S1 and S2 uh, are serviced by roads and waterways, which may help tourists move more easily. Yeah, Ois, uh, you could write that. I mean, it's a little bit of an assumption. We don't know what those roads and waterways look like, but uh, it's okay. Uh, careful not to assume or give opinion in task one. That's really tricky with a diagram like this because... People really want to give opinions, but we don't know that. So uh, we have to be very careful to not make assumptions that we cannot support. Okay. Ferdov says, analyzing deeper, it's obvious that both sites are accessible either by boats or vehicles. Okay, good. Um, Janiel says, after a deeper inspection of the island, it's clear that S1 and S2 are both easily accessible by roads and waterways. Good. Abhishek says, at a deeper inspection, both plants have similar infrastructure such as waterways and road access. Moreover, S1 is closer to Georgetown and Cross Hill, while S2 um, is nearby the village as well as the peak. The peak is a little bit further, Abhishek. Careful not to make too many strong assumptions like that. Uh, the village is definitely close, but the peak is, uh, I would say, roughly three kilometers to the southeast, okay? So careful not to over-assume, okay? Uh, it's better to write in detail, right? So nevertheless, S2 is surrounded by animal habitats and is much closer uh, to the peak than S1. All right. So now I'm going to write a little bit more. Uh, I have some time. Why not uh, include some information to about the craters and then maybe a little bit about um, the airport. And here we have craters here. It looks like we have some more, but here we have the name. So these are probably the main attraction here. Okay. So... Okay, here's a new word for you, uh, equidistance, okay? Uh, it's basically taking equal and distance and then slamming these two words together, taking out the L. It means the same distance. So the craters are roughly equal distance uh, from both of the sites, um, mostly to the south, about, well, how far would we say uh, using this scale about four kilometers away, right? So the craters are roughly equidistant from both sites, mostly to the south, about four kilometers away. The airstrip is slightly closer to S1 than S2. Okay. All right. Um, so we're doing good. And um, I mean, we can go into more details if need be. But at this point, I would probably just write a summary. I think that if we write a good summary here, we will probably end up with at least 150 words. Okay. And I want to challenge you for the summary here. Now, the summary um, in summary. Okay. Uh, should be something that we can see from the map clearly and something useful. And here, what you should do is think about the summary like you are the person who's going to open this adventure company. Uh, what would you summarize here uh, so that you can think about that, uh, sleep on it, and make a better decision on where to build uh, your adventure company? Okay, so... Uh, what would you summarize here? Give me that information. 
So based on everything that we have discussed about uh, the towns, the animal habitats, the peak, the crater, the roads, the waterways, what do you think would be a logical summary for that businessman or businesswoman who is making up their mind of where to uh, put down the stake and start pouring the concrete uh, for this adventure company? What would you say? Okay, something that's clearly visible. You don't want to assume too much. You don't want to make a suggestion or uh, create an idea that's um, outlandish or tough to assume. So Janiel says both sites are well planned by the company according to different visitor needs. Um, yeah, I see where you're going with it, Janiel. I think you can word it better. Um, Okay, so Ois says each site has unique features, whether close to the coast or um, the surrounding landscape. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think, Ois, you're on the right track, definitely. Very, very close to what I'm thinking, for sure. I want to see maybe one more before I write up mine, and then you can compare, okay? Bakrat says S2 is adjoined by animal habitats and craters in the airport. Both are middle of S1 and S2. Uh, Bakrat, it's a little bit confusing. You're putting too many ideas into too short of a sentence. Okay, it's confusing, so careful about that. All right. Um, here, I'll write my summary, and then we'll see if you agree. So in summary... Okay, so that's what I would write. Um, in summary, site one and two each have some similarities as well as unique features. The former is closer to more civilization and therefore amenities, and the latter is better positioned for nearby adventure. That's what I would summarize. Okay, uh, let's see how many words we have here. Just give me a moment together with the overview. Yeah, so we're at about 185 words roughly which is just perfect, okay? So let me read through um, the response, make sure it's correct. Here we go. This blueprint of a Caribbean island details key geographical features such as localities, animal habitats, waterways, and roads, as well as two locations, S1, S2. Oh, got a little bit overzealous there. Just a second... Anyway, I'll fix that later. Okay, uh, here we go. So, uh, which are considered for the development of a tourist adventure business. Immediately, it is clear that S1 is planned to be located near the west coast in the island. However, S2 is inland uh, near the center of the island. Both of these sites are surrounded by different key features. Each of the proposed locations are accessible by either road or waterway. However, S1 is located just roughly one kilometer from the biggest settlement on the island, Georgetown, as where S2 is over five kilometers to the east, located next to Two Boats Village. Nevertheless, S2 is surrounded by animal habitats and is much closer to the peak than S1. 
The craters are roughly equidistant from both of the sites, mostly to the south, about 4 kilometers away. The airstrip is slightly closer to S1 than S2. In summary, Site 1 and 2 each have some similarities as well as unique features. The former is closer to more civilization and therefore amenities, and the latter is better positioned for nearby adventure. Okay, uh, so I'm happy with that. That should get me uh, my band 9, and now I'm writing like a pro. Uh, in order to write like a pro, what I needed to do was write the overview as two parts, paraphrasing the question with more details, then paying attention to the main feature that's most observable by looking at the big pictures. And then I had to plan each point of the analysis very carefully to structure it well. Okay, hopefully that helped everyone. And uh, I will be back uh, in uh, 30 minutes with uh, listening uh, part three and part four continuing from yesterday's class. So hopefully all of our lovely viewers will hang around to practice some listening with us. Um, Abhishek, thank you. Uh, and, uh, good contributions, everyone. Good work. Keep it up. Uh, Bakrad, keep going forward. Always keep, uh, focusing, concentrate on that grammar. You're very welcome, honey. Uh, see you all in half an hour. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest in Hungary for now. Bye.